for jumping on. I've got my earbuds in. I'm pretty sure they're hooked up. But if you could share in a comment um, if my audio is coming through. If not, I'll stop and start over. And I'm like, I'm pretty good today. I'm in good lighting. <laughs> lighting makes a difference. Uh, I do have some makeup on today. And uh, many of you know I went plant-based reasonably uh, recently. And uh, I'll share some updates on that next weekend. I'm Carol Tattle. I'm the creator of Dressing Your Truth. Let me know, um, the ladies watching, can you share in a comment if you're hearing me? Can you hear my audio? I'd appreciate that. And I am in Tijuana, Mexico. If you've followed me for a while, you know I've made visits down here across the border from San Diego that um, I come to a clinic called the BioAdvanced Medical Clinic. I'm telling them here. I'm sure I've sent you some people by now. And what brought me here originally was just the continual, he continual healing and repair of particularly my right foot and being able to access stem cell, stem cell injections here at a very reasonable price that are not available in the United States. And it's a really, I mean, this clinic is first class. It's, it's the real deal. And I love, I've fallen in love with Mexico in a manner I never have because there's so many stereotypes about this country, but the people here are just so kind, so remarkable, and just really willing to serve and, and honor you. I want to continue this chat briefly about um, the Martha Stewart thing. You know, it bothered me when someone said I was virtue signaling, that I was just bringing it all forward to make myself look better. Like, I don't do that. I'm better than you. That's what I need to do with that. My job, I have chosen as my profession through an, what I feel is an inspired calling to help women heal from the shame-based beauty we have been uh, struggling with the entirety of our lives, especially if you're 60 and up. And I'll tell you the backstory on that real quick, but bottom line, the beauty, beauty industry presents a morphed, unrealistic perception of beauty. We didn't have an objective awareness of that till we all could see how it's done through our own devices. When I was 10, do I think, oh, they're just editing that photo. Oh, that's not real. Not at all. No. In fact, that's why you've heard me um, teach that type 4 became the standard for the supermodel, which started in 1969. I was 12 years old when Twiggy was launched as the first supermodel. We're still living in a supermodel fashion highly edited, morphed beauty culture that the media pitches to us. Type fours were selected because they were the most balanced. They had the more distinct bone structure. Their skin was very porcelain and they were could be fashioned in about anything as a young woman and look good. And they this all of that when the editing was minimal, they didn't have the editing uh, capacity they do now. That's why type four women were selected to show us that form of beauty. And I, I hope I want you to understand that this really stood out to me to see an 81 year old woman who I have had high regard for. I met her when I was 29. I went to a book signing slash brunch, bought a ticket with my mom. I was 29 at the time. We drove in from where we lived in the East Bay to San Francisco, went to Macy's. My mother adored Martha Stewart because it was all about comfort in your home. My mom's a type two and bringing comfort. My mother was always about comfort in her home, comfort food, comfortable meals. And she was a role model for that. And I met her when she first launched her career as a, uh, at the time, it would have been just like the, the uh, media model of the supreme home economist. <laughs> I mean, I have a home economics degree. I used to teach home economics in high school. Sign my book, still have the book, entertain the in book called Entertaining. And there she went. And so, you know, I guess I would hope more from an 81 year old woman who the whole thing was positioned 
to really be an example that even as we age, we can be sexy and relevant and be on magazine covers, but they didn't show her. They showed her highly edited as though she were 50 again. So it, it's like it was, you know, they swung and they struck out. It's like, okay, that's just contradictory. Because, I mean, how many of us over 60 notice what's going on with our neck? Notice what's going on here. Our arms. <laughs> here, I'll pitch myself right now. I got two more products I'm adding to my skincare line in the next, in a very uh, short time that address some other concerns I've been, been aware of in my own aging process. And again, never do I use, do what I do with the thought, oh, I really want to look younger. My goal and 100% is I want to be the healthiest version of me. And I want to see what's possible. And my skin's an organ. What's unfortunate is that they presented again to us that aging skin is unattractive. And you have to erase all that. That's why I put up that post last night of like me, legit, no makeup. Here I am. No special lighting. The lighting sucked. I was in my hotel room and uh, put up, you know, you can get apps right and left on how to filter and, and change your appearance. I mean, I could have kept going on that one. And so I, you know, I, I was like, well, let me show you what this looks like. <laughs> Come on, stop buying into this. We've been dealing with it our whole lives. So I figured out it triggered me for the primary reason that I hated how I looked. Go onto my website and click on the about page at dressingyourtruth.com, you will see there an inked out photo of me as a seventh, in my seventh grade yearbook photo. I completely inked it out. I hated myself, hated how I looked, hated my body, grew up into my uh, teen years, got into high school, had an eating disorder. My brothers were heavily influenced by what beauty was. Of course they were. No fault to them. I got teased incessantly. I was called peg legs, carol barrel. I was shamed for my appearance, for my body. I was never given. My mother, this is so many of us that grew up in this era in our 60s and up. We heard our mothers comparing themselves to other women. I frequently heard my mother as we were walking down the street shopping in our local town. Am I as big as that woman from behind? Do I look as bad as her? My mother, a beautiful woman in her late 70s. When she hit her 80s, she did take a, uh, she had a, health crisis. She had heart failure and she took a turn for, um, you know, the worse in her health. She was no longer able to live independently and it, it really aged her. My mother was embarrassed to be seen by her own family because of how she looked. Is that helping us to see an 81 year old woman on a, okay, the whole thing is just like stupid to me as a businesswoman. I'm like, okay, Sports Illustrated, you just want us talking about you because apparently you've become irrelevant. My sons and sons-in-law aren't reading you. I really don't care to see a 81 year old woman on your cover that you've completely morphed and they get their sports news. The big sports junkies in my family get it online. You know, Reddit forums, they, they get, you know, they're plugged in. They're not looking at that magazine. So to me, it was just, you know, if it was on Vogue, I'd have probably gone, yeah, whatever. It, that's what they do. Yeah. You know, fashion magazine, that's the fashion industry, but they made a point. They touted themselves to be making a difference in behalf of aging women to, uh, you know, show up and represent aging women. And they didn't. I'm like, missed opportunity, peeps. I have every, not a long hat, not, not only having met Martha Stewart, I, I, uh, I have every, every, I have quite the collection of everyday food mag. Every, I did every volume, every one of them. I have this huge collection in my uh, in my cupboard, and I don't even use them anymore because I just Google stuff. But you know, I like that. But how many people have that whole collection? So I'm keeping it. So anyway, nothing against her. I mean, you know, she she's she's been incredibly successful. It's just I would really like to see as many of you have said that uh, we're represented more authentically as we age, and I'm all for showing fitness as a, um, yeah, you, you see me, I'm, you know, I look like whatever I'll, I'll come on and film videos and go live even without any makeup or having done my hair. 
and I like to do those mobility challenges and say, this is what I'm proud of. I'm okay with all this, but I do. Yeah. Do I do things that help um, improve the quality and health of my skin? hundred uh, percent. I'm really, really firm though with my photographer and my creative designer. I said, you cannot ever edit my photos to a degree that if someone saw me in person, there would be a discrepancy. And so we lightly edit my photos. I mean, you're looking at me now. I don't have any filters on. So any questions, thoughts, let me see what you've got. I'll be honest. I thought it was so cool for her to be brave to pose for that when she's older. I didn't even notice the edit. Well, Melissa, you are younger. You're not in our age group. So you're not dealing with the look at my neck, look at my chest. There's no way. There's 100% no way an 81-year-old woman has a neck and chest as smooth and clear as that. It's not possible. It's really, I mean, maybe if you're Asian and you have kept yourself covered from the sun, what would have been brave, what would have been brave is to show a more authentic version of herself. That's why I would put Mae Musk up there because I believe she does achieve that and she does strive for that. It's authentic. It's like, hey, and I think she looks awesome. So to me, it kind of took away from that. That It's like, no, it, it's, I feel like I'm brave to just like, in a world of social media where everything's filtered and edited and, you know, airbrushed. Does that make me brave? You know, I just think it's, I don't know. It's my type three practical self. Okay. She says that and we're having, Melissa and I are having a little conversation on our own here. She says, I hear, as I'm hearing you more, I'm seeing where you come from. See, I've noticed that women under, that are in their 40s or less than 40 are like, this is cool, go Martha. And I'm like, no, do you know how many women now that just reinforces the thought, oh, I'm so embarrassed to show my neck and my chest and my arms. I don't, I can't post a photo in my tight Facebook group or my lifestyle group. I just look too old. I don't look good. That's what it's doing. I started dressing your truth, not because I wanted you to know how to shop. That was not the, yeah, I'll, I'll give you the backstory and then we'll jump off here because I know you got all kinds of stuff going on today. Um, it was night, it was 2004 when this opportunity passed, came into my path, came onto my path that I'd been introduced to some profiling system that had a fashion element to it. And it wasn't new stuff. There's, this has been written about since the 40s. I have books that, as I did my research, just to make sure that my content wasn't being, um, that it was original and my own body of work and, and checking with my copyright and trademark lawyer that I made sure I could find as much as I could in what bodies of work were already out there. I want to have my own original body of work. Are there some parallels? Is that the, you know, kind of, the bigger look at it, is there similarities? Certainly, because it's a profiling system that has a fashion element to it. But mine's the only one based on energy and movement, natural movement. Everything else is heavily personality based or uh, coloring based. And so in 2004, when this really came into my life, and I felt very, every, every work I've done, every book I've written has been an invitation from God and been asked and invited to do what I've done, 100%, that I have been given the inspiration and the calling to do this. And I thought, oh man, I was really moving into my energy healing work online. I was the first to launch a um, video generated healing resources. I was really early in this world in 2000, the year 2000. 2000 to 2003, my my presence online as a new medium was really out in front and offering what I now offer, you know, in a much more crowded space, but in a much, much more, um, the, the tech side of it is so much more developed and the user experience is so wonderful. But this, I'm like, fashion? I don't even have, I mean... I hated how, I, I can't say I loved how I looked when this showed up. I had primarily every bottom garment in my closet was black, you know, hiding the flaws. And as I 
was given this uh, insight, it was like, you're meant to do this, Carol. You need to help women. And it was what, you know, it wasn't about, well, you need to help women shop and you need to help women put outfits together. You need to help women pick the right hairstyle. No, that wasn't what I was being asked to do. All that, those are all pieces and parts of it. I was being asked to help women heal from one of the biggest wounding um, experiences we've ever lived through as a culture in the United States, especially of being female. And especially if you were born between 1950 and 1960. It's getting better every decade. There got to be more enlightenment around this, but it's still happening in epidemic proportions with all the filtering going on now with younger faces. I live in a state where lip filler, cheek filler, and Botox is, in my opinion, a bit out of control, starting very young, you know, even late teens, like crazy. Women saying they look old as though that's a negative when they're 35, like, oh, I look old. You're going to get old getting around it. You've heard me say getting old is inevitable. How we age is a choice. I hope to show you through my example and my opportunity, I feel a responsibility for this now at 65 to show you options, teach you so you can choose what's correct for you on how to age well, how to slow down the aging process, how to take care of yourself. I hope for you to be pain free, to be disease free, to feel good about yourself when you look in the mirror that you can say, like I'm able to now, when I look in the mirror, I love what I see. I am, I am aging beautifully and gracefully. Cause I feel I am. And I'm okay with the fact that I'm just going to keep getting older. And so with that invitation to start DYT in 2004, it was truly about helping women heal. What many didn't even know was a misperception. We've, we have been taught that there is a flaw. What I discovered as I started to develop my body of work and write it, that the flaw, they had, that the fashion and beauty world delivered a message that led us to believe we were the flaw. And if there, their trends, their treatments, their beauty uh, approach would correct our flaw if we just followed them. Dressing your truth teaches you that the system is flawed and we're all beautiful. We are. You see our before and afters. You see the power of dressing your truth and helping bring forward the most beautiful characteristics of a woman that are now connected with the inner truth that they're carrying. It's just all, you know, it's the most beautiful garment you can put on is knowing your inner truth and then being able to express it through your fashion. I'm all for, you want to color your hair, color your hair. You want to get a facelift? You do it. I don't care. You know, none of that's not what this conversation's about. I just hope you strive to love yourself at whatever age you are and not think you have to be someone different than you are right now, but take the time to invest in yourself. Fitness is key. Be active. Mobility is going to be key as you age. Why not look as attractive as you can be and look authentic and true to yourself? I agree with that. You don't want to wear makeup? Don't wear makeup. You want to dress yourself up, glam yourself up? Do it. But do it from a place of confidence, not from a place of shame or inadequacy. That's what I'm really about. And, you know, that's why I, I hope you'll share. You know, I met this clinic and uh, came in yesterday, jogs with me. We come every six months now. Before I came, I said a prayer. My prayer was if there's anyone that I meant to meet that I can help, I pray that they will cross my path and I'll be able to do that. If there's anyone here that would be helpful to me, I pray that I will cross their path and that will be presented for me. I'm not kidding. When we came in to check in yesterday morning, I checked in at the desk that, you, that all that happens, and this woman goes, Carol, I love your work. We turned around, and I'm like, well, hey, nice to meet you, and da-da-da. And I said, well, do you know your type? And she was type four, and I'm like, well, would you like some help with that? And I said, you're type one. And then I said, how old are you? She was 57. The woman looks 35. Come on. I'm like, no. I'm sorry. Type four would not yell across the room to me as I my back's turned to you, too you know, thank me like that. He said, you're told, I've, I've run into her a couple more times here, but 
there it was. I had that opportunity. So I hope if this program has made a difference for you, um, I believe it has, that you'll pray that someone that you can extend this opportunity to crosses your path. Because that really, we depend on you. We don't have a lot of marketing dollars. We honestly don't. We're a small company. And uh, we are very conscientious of that. And so you're our, our best medium to help other women. And I hope that you'll pray or at least set the intention that if there's another, if there's a woman you're meant to share this information with, that it would be a great blessing in their life that they'll present and you'll be able to do that. And I, that would mean a lot to me. It really would. Let's help more women embrace wherever they are in life. You've got um, the fitness thing going so like, you know, if you're 30 or 35 and you don't have a six pack, you know, you're probably feeling bad about yourself. It's just like, you're still captive to this nonsense. <laughs> if at any time you look in the mirror and point out a flaw or think negatively of yourself. The only way you can have an opinion like that is if you've made a comparison. You don't realize all through your developing years since you were 10 or younger, that comparative thinking has been fed to you to compare. And you're not free of it till you've stopped that. So I invite you to stop it and I invite you to um, join me in dress the world of dressing your truth. Our Facebook groups are phenomenal. If you want to be with camaraderie and women that support each other, join Lifestyle, get in a tight Facebook group. It's really remarkable. I'm going to be coming on live again in a few days. Um, probably when I get back, we go back to Utah tomorrow. But I want to talk to you about the money cure and why that is such, in my opinion, in the seven years, this is my seventh time to offer this as a group supported experience, why this year is Pro, in my opinion, the most important time to join my 30-day money cure online course. And I'll be chatting with you about that. But thanks for tuning in and sharing your own thoughts. I appreciate all of you.